All right, the Edmonton Oilers are off to the second round of the Stanley Cup uh, playoffs following a victory over the Kings of Los Angeles, 4-3, in the game last night. If you want a real in-depth conversation about this, as you can tell by the jersey behind me, I was on Game Over Edmonton last night, breaking down this one. Uh, it's on the Game Over Network, so go check that out. Um, all right, so the Oilers move on. And they, like, just quite simply were the better hockey team throughout. That there was absolutely no doubt in my mind that they were just a superior hockey club to the LA Kings. And they are, I think, in a really, really good spot now. When you look at the next series, it's either going to be Vancouver shorthanded in goal or Nashville, who's just not as good as Edmonton is. And then going, presumably, going toward the West Final, going up against uh, Dallas, Vegas, or Colorado, who will have just survived an absolute bar fight of a series for four to seven games. So I think when you look at how things are shaking out for the Oilers, things have broken quite well for this team right now. And everything is clicking. At this point, that was a full team effort from them last night. Dreisaitl, I thought, was the best player on the ice. He, when Edmonton was going slow at the beginning, he was just like, you know what, guys? Let's do this thing. And he was powering his way forward and creating a lot of opportunities for his team. He was dynamic on the power play, which, as I explained on Game Over last night, really kind of ro rose all ships for, for them and was able to get that thing rolling in the right direction as well. And then... You look at the, the forward depth on this team. Uh, not that McDavid is a depth piece, but that first line was great as well. Uh, but Holloway, Perry, and McLeod, I, I thought, had a good game. Evander Kane, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who doesn't get enough credit for the net front presence that he is. The puck deflects in off of him for a big goal for the Oilers. He has had a couple of them in, in this series, and I, I just I don't think people give him credit for how much he battles in front of the goal. But that line... Was, th those guys were clicking as well. And then on the blue line, CeCe makes a really good play late to break up a cycle for the Kings that ends up with the Oilers clearing the zone. Bouchard was flying around the ice last night. Darnell Nurse was just a rock for them. And then when called upon, Stuart Skinner came up big. And that is the piece for the Oilers that is, I think, the difference. They have finally built this team into what it should have been for a while. They have added guys like Kane, who is playing his best, um, close to his best anyway. Um, they have added Henrique, who has been really strong. And between the pipes, Stuart Skinner has turned into a legitimate number one goalie at the best time. And I, I think you can make a case with Demko out, you can make a very strong case that he's the best goalie left in the Western Conference. And that is a real boost when you also have like two of the top three players left in the entire National Hockey League playing on your team. If you have a goalie who is playing well as well, then holy shit, is this thing really starting to move in the right direction for the Edmonton Oilers? And so now they have a few days to refuel, a few days to refocus, and a few days to kind of get their bearings and make a real push here in the, the, the second round. I think that this is a very, very, very dangerous Edmonton Oilers team. And you know what? As I am saying this, let's just... Uh... Let's take a little look-see at some futures markets, hey? Let's, I haven't, haven't really done a whole lot of gambling talk on, on this lately. So let's go here. NHL playoffs. Let's click on futures. Uh, can we go, I guess it would be season bets. Yeah, take longer, don't you? So the Oilers are tied for the best Stanley Cup odds right now at plus 450 to win the cup along with Carolina. I don't like that Carolina play at all. Um, I would... I would take the Rangers before I would take Carolina. So I guess the top five here are Carolina and Edmonton at plus 450, Florida and Colorado at plus 500, New York Rangers at plus 650, Dallas at plus 750, Boston plus 1100, Vancouver plus 1700, Vegas plus 3000, and Toronto plus 5000. If we're looking for a value play in all of that, um, I don't hate the Colorado pick. They're playing really well right now. They were my pick to move on anyway. Um, so getting uh, Colorado at plus 500, don't hate that. Getting the Rangers at plus 650, don't hate that either. So a couple of value plays out there in the market. Uh, and another one that could be a value there, the Dallas Stars, as they pick up a victory over the LA Kings last night. Now, or sorry, over the, the Vegas Golden Knights. They have now won three in a row and have the Golden Knights in an area um, that is exclusive to sports 
on the brink. They, uh, the, the Golden Knights are on the brink of elimination following a victory for the Stars. And I said this last time and I'm going to say it again. Can we stop pretending like Vegas had some unfair advantage by having to sit Mark Stone for half of the year? And yes, it allowed them to accumulate quite a bit of talent. But it also has put them in a spot where they have to go up against a number one seed. You think about it. If Vegas was healthy, if Mark Stone is there... Is it out of the realm of possibility that this is a two seed in the Western or in the um, in the Pacific Division? I do not. Now that probably means they have to play the Oilers. But is there a world where things could have shaken out a little bit differently for this team and they end up playing the Kings in the first round? Absolutely, there is. Could they have won the Pacific? Maybe. Uh, Vancouver gone on quite a bit of a roll. But all I am saying is we get so focused on oh well, they could play a team with eighty-seven million dollars in cap space, right? But. They also had to grind their way through the back part of the regular season. They didn't have the luxury of having one of the most complete players in the National Hockey League on their roster. And so I, I just, I fail to see how that is a knock against them. That they were able to make the playoffs without Mark Stone and without some of the players that they were dealing with. And now those guys have to get up to speed in the playoffs, I just don't think it's the advantage that everyone thinks it is. I, I really genuinely don't. And if we want to put in a salary cap for the playoffs, I think there's going to be unintended consequences for that. If Vancouver has to put Thatcher Demko on LTIR just so they can bring in Silvois and and DeSmith as their goalies, I, I don't think that is a system that works. Um, if you have a Leafs team that's right up against the salary cap and now Austin Matthews goes down, but you can't yet, you, you have to call someone up to, to bring them into the lineup. Well, the, the only guy we have costs 1.5 million. We can't bring him in. Guess we're going with uh, 10 skater or 11 forwards and six defensemen tonight. I would hate that that would be a thing in the Stanley Cup playoffs. So if you want to not include LTIR in some kind of salary cap thing, I'm going to need to see a way that doesn't, I think, greatly impact the playoffs before I, I am on board with it. I, I just, I think if you got rid of the salary, or if you implemented a salary cap for the playoffs as well, there would be a lot of unintended consequences. And also, what is the fun of trade deadline? It's movement. It's players going around, right? It's rumors. It's, okay, well, this trade. And then the hurdle trade comes out of fucking nowhere, and we all lose our shit about it. Why would we want to implement a system that limits that? I know it's not fair. It is fair. Every team could do this. Calgary could have put Huberto on LTIR and acquired eight different guys if they, if they so choose. Now, the player would have to be on board and all of that, but right, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? That this is, this is available for every team. It's not unfair. Everyone can do it. And I, I just find it hard to believe that Vegas went out and actually just cut the spleen of Stone on their own. And uh, so that they could go out and acquire Noah Hannafin and Tomas Hurdle. I, I just don't think that's the case. They they had an injury. They had some cap dollars with that and they exploited it. I have no problem with the system. I have no problem with them exploiting it. That's But now, now they are in the spot that they are in. Now that they had to come in as a wildcard team and face a very good division winning Dallas Stars team... I just don't see how that's, oh, wow, boy, they really caught a break there. I think that's kind of bullshit.